All right, quick calibration test real quick. So uh, sniper towers from the bottom right, uh, moving up to the top left. Uh, so very bottom right, right. Now, next one right. Now, next one right. Now, oh, that was my wood. <laughs> next one right. Now, next one right. Now, next one right. Now, and last one right. Now. All right. What is going on guys? It's Mojo, uh, and today we are playing, well I guess not playing, like I've said in all my Operation Recaps. We are going over some Boom Beach, and uh, we've got an operation for you guys, and this was a complete annihilation of Operation Powder Keg. So we used 12 attacks, honestly we could have gotten by with even less if we used all our strong attackers, or the last base we like didn't even take very seriously because... I soloed Gambit, and then Player and Narthark tag-teamed Tonnage, and then S2 and Whittle tag-teamed Arsenal. So five attacks took down three of the bases. So really easy stuff there. Um, and so we were like, well, that means we have 20 attacks left on Atlas, and Atlas wasn't even that hard of a base. It was just like, take out some shock launchers, then push the HQ. So anyway... Let's get right into it. Finally, you guys get to see one of player's attacks. So, here we go. Here's Tonnage. Uh, this is the layout with the core in the back. He's going to take out these rocket launchers at the very beginning. Uh, pretty good move there. He could have also gotten by with flaring or like letting his uh, warriors take them out later. But I think that was probably the better move of the two. Or maybe he could have like started with his warriors over here like taking out this stuff but he didn't run out of time so that didn't really matter either so i'm just kind of thinking out loud of other possible options if you guys were to do a similar thing so now uh what you'll you, whenever you're using and or doing an operation attack and you're smoking even in some player bases and stuff uh whenever you're flaring and smoking warriors or anything for that matter you usually want to put your first or like your next smoke down before you flare so like he did that there, he uh he put the smoke down, then he's gonna flare over to the rocket launcher. Little slow, I don't know what he what exactly he was doing. Maybe he was kind of thinking um of if he should take out the rocket launchers first or not. But anyway, this is a great move here. So he doesn't put the last smoke on the shock launcher, instead he just shocks the defenses that are gonna start taking his warriors out as his warriors run onto that first shock launcher. Then they naturally, most of them, go for the second one. Then he flares back up to this rocket launcher up here. Uh, maybe one other thing he could have done better was instead of flaring to that rocket launcher, he could have just flared up above the core in between them. But um, he, he wouldn't have soloed it anyway. So it's not like he really needed to lay into the core anymore. Uh, he, he didn't have any uh, statue boosts going on so great work considering that um, he's a he's a I've learned so much from or so many things about warriors just from him being in the task force he's crazy crazy good um, like that was a good attack and that was probably his second worst attack I, there was one where he actually kind of messed up on uh, that was actually like a like a kind of a bad attack but i've had plenty of bad attacks too they all happen every once in a while uh you just have to shake them off but anyway here's Northarg, another one of the officers another warrior attacker he's going to take a couple of these uh cells do kind of the same thing that player did well my screen just lagged uh and then he kind of does it a little bit differently i actually probably would have done the same thing there though maybe Maybe start on a machine gun, but starting on the power cell is also good because then his troops all naturally moved down towards the power core. So, um, amazing finish by Northarg. That's usually how we take down tonnage. A lot of times me and player will tag team it, but um, still great attack. So now we're going to do show S2's attack. He was only trying to take out this rocket launcher up here. That was all that was really needed. Um... Also, one thing he could have done better here was flare earlier on the beach, like to a mortar instead of the machine gun that was up there. But uh, good job there, S2, taking out both rocket launchers, which made it possible for Whittle. Well, Whittle might have been able to without taking out that ro rocket launcher, but uh, Whittle here has level 19 and 18 heavy Zooka, so 
he's really just going to waste away at this base. Um, his landing crafts aren't perfect, but they hold a, they still hold a good amount of troops. Um, so he's just going ham. He has a lot of gunboat energy, a lot of troop health, I think. Um, and so he finishes that base. That was the lowest force point base, so it had like the uh, least um, building health boost, I think. But uh, anyway, here we go. Here's Gambit. Um, this was a really tough base. So as you can see, I'm going to be trying to all Zooka. I have done this before, um, but it was a little bit different layout. And that was actually the attack that player messed up. The one attack that player has not done superior on. Um, he he went up here, tried to take out a lot of the defenses that were up here. Not not this off last not last time we uh, tried this. Um, he took out and was trying to take out a lot of the defenses up there. Uh, actually, well, all right, here, I'll, I'll view battle, kind of talk you through what player was doing. Uh, he, he was trying to take out a lot of the defenses up here and only like really weak in the shock launcher. Make sure you guys go check out that video. It's called Live Operate All Zookas for the Win or FTW anyway. Um, but anyway, he basically like got this shock launcher down to one shot left and this rocket launcher on Gambit that day was a cannon So I had less to worry about. So anyway, let's get into the raid for real now So you guys saw the part of the beginning. This is a full solo. No one has attacked this base yet um, I've got a couple tro uh, trophies statue boosts going on. I think it's troop damage and gunboat energy uh, so smoking my Zookas up here it's really stressful using all Zookas like this in the operation. Um, every little gunboat ability that you deploy is just like so stressful, like you could mess up at any second. So anyway, I'm gonna flare over to this rocket launcher because that's the biggest threat right now. Another thing I could have done was maybe flare between the shock launcher and the rocket launcher, but um, I think we would have been fine either way. So I'm going to flare back just to avoid the boom cannons and my Zookas will shoot the cannon down here as they shoot the core and as you can see just so much firepower with all these Zookas the core is going to go down. Uh, the building health was right about 100% maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less um, give or take like 20 probably. Well I don't think it was below 90 but it might have been up to like 120. So that was Gambit really stressful attack. But I did solo it, and uh, so if you guys would like to learn some all zookas, some warriors, uh, any type of attack strategies, come join us. Task Force, real quick, is sanctioned. Here's our info. Come join us. We've been doing powder keg basically every day, but today we're probably going to go down and do upper lip because we're a little bit lower on intel than we normally are. So want to make sure that we're doing fine on that. So anyway, uh, here is Larry's finish on Atlas. Uh, basically, all these defenses were like rocket launchers and shock launchers with a couple, I think, uh, like the two front here were flamethrowers, two front there, machine guns, same thing with that. But I think all the rest were like a combination of shock launchers and rocket launchers. So Larry also has level 19, 18 heavy Zooka. And then he's also got some medics in here to counteract these rocket launchers. He could have used the all Zookas uh, because the, the uh, rocket launchers weren't in range of the Zookas at this point but seriously it doesn't even matter <laughs> like his troops are just so OP it's ridiculous he has crazy magma statues as well so sh big shout out to Larry he grabs a lot of intel same with player uh, they they have actually I don't remember the last time I beat either one of them in a week of intel which is crazy considering how much I play uh, yeah so um we got a couple minutes here uh five minutes before the op starts my troops are ready let's go ahead and do one raid real quick it's just gonna be an npc base i think yeah we'll hit up shockless i've got a couple boosts going uh this is actually right after the video that i recorded don't know which one is gonna go up first but i recorded just a simple little map clearing video with warriors um you know, just having a little bit of fun. Ah, what the heck?
we're gonna have to pay for that and a lot of extra smoke all right so now we're gonna do it a little bit differently because I don't want to waste another entire smoke so we're gonna do shock shock sh flare shock shock so rather than putting the last smoke on the HQ as you can see I still took it out before my first shock even ran out of time uh, I just flared to the HQ only lost three warriors because it was only boom cannons shooting at me so uh, not too worried there but since I for some reason kept misclicking the beach and wasn't paying attention my warriors uh, got to the beach late and then I had to flare too early so they ran really wide so anyway that's what I had to do there but that is gonna be the end of the operation recap hope you guys decide to join us again here is our information it is only Monday, so that's why our intel count is really low. It's Monday morning, so we've only had like 36 hours tops. And I didn't play much last night because I wanted to save my online time to upgrade my radar. So, again, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great week, and peace out. Boom on.